away a hundred years ago or so, and that is when we, about the time we had an income tax introduced in the Federal Reserve, changed our, our foreign policy, but something else happened. Uh, somehow or another, uh, our country took freedom and chopped it into pieces, and uh, some people defend one part of it, and other people defend another. Sometimes it's a political party, one versus the other. Uh, but they don't defend liberty as a whole. Liberty means your right to your life and the right to your property. But some people think, well, the government's responsible to protect your right in free enterprise and have less regulations and less taxes. But somebody else might say, well, freedom means that they ought to stay out of my life. It's my life. I can do with my own body, mind, and soul what I want as long as I don't hurt other people. And other people defend them. Why, why can't we defend this as a whole? It's all. It's your life and, and your liberty. It should be your personal life as well as, uh, as your economic life. Under those circumstances, it's a wonderful experiment because it will cre create the greatest, uh, the greatest prosperity. But the other part that I love about it is the freedom of philosophy and the Constitution, it's not divisive. It brings people together. If you really understand liberty, you're not so judgmental about telling other people what to do with their lives and tell them how to instruct them or how to spend their money. And the Constitution defends that. So this brings diversity together. And if people want to use their life or, uh, in a positive way or if they want to waste their life, uh, it's up to them. You can be responsible for your own life, your family, your friends, and your neighbors, and you can persuade people and through your church. But when the government assumes this responsibility that it's going to moralize with you and tell you what to do with your life and moralize with you on how they're going to take your money and take it and give it to somebody else who might not be so ambitious, it ruins the whole thing. Liberty and That might start with repealing the Patriot Act and... <laughs>
your neighbor, your friends, as you would like to be treated. That's not too complicated. All the major religions have virtually endorsed the principle of the golden rule. But it seems like that's the last thing we ever think about in our country, of the golden rule, about treating other countries the way we would like to be treated. What would we think if people were dropping drone missiles on us and killing people in this country, having collateral damage and killing innocent people? I think we'd be pretty darn annoyed with it. No wonder they're annoyed with us and what we do all over the Middle East and around the world. So I think it's time we said, look, what, why don't we take the advice of the Founding Fathers? They said, yes, you should be isolationist, you should be engaged in the world, you should be friends and trade with anybody willing to do it. You ought to use diplomacy at times when you can't just think. We have 12,000 diplomats. Don't you think it'd be a pretty good idea if we started using them once in a while? <laughs> Is America that military 
military law can be imposed, American citizens can be captured and put in prison, including Guantanamo, and denied a lawyer. That's what's on the books, and, and it looks like it's going to pass. So we are not getting more free. We are getting less free. Now, the way the Federal Reserve works into this is when government grows, you have to stop the growth of government. It'd be good if we just had enough people there quit spending the money. Or a president would veto every single bill. That might help, too. <laughs> if our government couldn't borrow money, couldn't print money, and they had to pay for everything they do by direct taxation, government would grow. Everybody would know exactly how big the government is growing. Also, something that would help about, uh, you know, to get to people's attention is repeal withholding. Uh, just if you can't get rid of the taxes, repeal withholding. What if every American knew exactly how much tax they pay every week? They had to write a check to the government. All of a sudden, this thing would end rather quickly. And uh, people, people would be outraged on how much taxes uh, they pay. But because we facilitate it, uh, Jefferson argued that uh, the government should be able to borrow money, but that did pass, and government, our government is permitted under the Constitution to borrow money. But they did not give uh, the authority to do the next step. If you can't tax enough, if you can't borrow enough, well, create a Federal Reserve system that just prints the money. And uh, that is what happens. So because they can do that, and you don't see the consequence right away, and it's delayed, and you can't find exactly who suffers the most, like some people benefit and some people suffer, what it does, it causes government to grow, and the bigger the government grows, the worse our liberties are, the worse our economy is. So we have to address foreign policy, monetary policy, domestic economic policy, tax policy, regulatory policy, if we want to restore a prosperous free society. And that should be our goal. If we just provide the right environment, the burden does not fall on the President or the Congress to decide what you want to do with your life, what you want to do with your money, or what foreigners want to do with their government. It would be something that would come about differently, but you have to provide the right environment. And that was the genius of the founders. They provided the right environment. They knew and understood what sound money meant. They knew and understood what free markets meant, what property rights meant, what contracts meant. And the rest was left up to the people. So, so tragically, I believe, is what's happened over this last 100 years is we've lost our understanding and our confidence how a free society works. And that is going to be the burden placed on your shoulders to find out and understand exactly how freedom works, why it's a benefit, where the shortcomings are, and to expect it and how you compensate for them, but not to throw up your hands and say, well, what's the government going to do? What's the, how is the government going to take care of me? Well, we know what they did when they decided everybody wanted a house. Yeah, they had a housing program and they printed a lot of money. And uh, guess what? A few people went bankrupt. They got bailed out. The middle class lost their jobs and they lost their houses. It doesn't work. So when the government gets involved, it's pretty risky business. And then when it gets uh, when it gets touch and go, then they want to put build up more fear to scare us into immediately saying, "Well, we need the government to take care of us." One of the most upsetting statements that I heard right after 9/11 was. You know, uh, yes, I know you're not supposed to sacrifice your liberties, uh, uh, you know, for security, but under these conditions, we must do this in order to be safe. I have a different opinion. I don't think you ever have to sacrifice any liberty for your security. It's not necessary to do that. <laughs>